oil is a limited resource. That is because oil takes hundreds of millions of years to be created. The term peak oil is when oil extraction rates max out and begin to decline. At this point, the oil supply will go into freefall. This means after peaking, demand will continue to increase while supply decreases, causing price to skyrocket. The term peak oil has become synonymous with a host of concerns about the future of energy supplies. This presentation addresses whether global oil production has peaked or will soon peak, what consequences that could have for the fossil fuel dependent societies we live in, and what should be done about it. This concept is based on the production rates of oil wells and combined production rates of the associated oil fields. The production rate from oil will usually grow over time exponentially until the rate peaks and then declines. It is worthy to note that peak oil is not running out of oil, but running out of cheap oil. While it is inexpensive to extract crude oil from oil fields in the desert, it is much harder to build drilling platforms offshore. In addition, all oil fields reach a point where they become economically not viable. If it takes more than a barrel of oil to extract a barrel of oil, it is pointless to further extract. The term peak oil was the idea of M. King Hubbard a U.S. geologist who was working for Shell Oil at the time. He saw that oil discoveries graphed over time followed a bell curve, and that this curve is similar to the bell curve of oil production from individual fields. He believed that oil would peak sometime between 1955 and 2000. It's the most disturbing thing that's ever happened to the human species. It's responsible for our technological society, and in terms of human history, it's a very brief Epoch. So what is oil used for? Why does this all matter? Of the 85 million barrels of oil the world uses every day, as expected, the majority of it is used for gasoline and other fuels. But what about the rest? In 2005, a report was published by the U.S. Department of Energy entitled The Hirsch Report. There isn't that much oil out there. We've been on a uh, plateau of world oil production since 2004. People have been trying very hard, and they can't increase oil production from here. Uh, the problem, first of all, is a liquid fuels problem. Oil is liquid fuels. There's an enormous amount of equipment out there in the world, cars, planes, boats, ships. Uh, all kinds of things that represent an enormous capital cost, they use liquid fuels. So we're not going to do anything with wind power or, or something else in the near term. What we need is alternate liquid fuels as well as a big push on conservation. So when will we hit peak oil? There are many various opinions from different sources. And with all things, some are optimistic and some are pessimistic. One pessimist was M. King Hubbard, the founder of the principle of peak oil. He predicted that we would hit the peak of oil production in 1995. However, he did not anticipate the oil crisis of the 70s, or the development of better and more efficient technologies. Optimists include 
the International Energy Agency, and the Energy Information Administration. Both groups are predicting that the peak of oil production won't be until 2020 or later. Using Hans Rosling's Gapminder software, we are able to view oil production and consumption curves from different countries. These curves show oil production in the United States, Saudi Arabia, and China. The size of each point on the curve indicates the level of oil consumption of each country, with the U.S. being the largest consumer and China steadily growing. The U.S. curve seems to show that we have already reached our peak production, while our consumption has remained on the rise. This leads to greater dependence on foreign oil. Peak oil projections include proven reserves as well as discoveries of new reserves. But this graph shows there are fewer discoveries each year. So what will happen after the peak of production? We know that due to supply and demand, prices will skyrocket. There will be many shortages of gas and other fuels. Scarcity could lead to an economic depression or even a political conflict. As Dr. Hirsch mentioned earlier, oil is best suited for transportation due to its high energy density in a liquid state. This makes oil easy to transport and pump, while not taking much space in the vehicle it is used to power. Energy density is particularly important in aviation. A battery-powered airplane would have very little space or weight allowance for passengers. When oil supplies begin to dwindle, air transportation will begin to become prohibitively expensive. When supplies of oil and natural gas begin to decline and prices begin to skyrocket, the agriculture industry will need to find new ways to grow food. The food supply chain requires large amounts of fossil fuels to create the crops we have today. The main ingredient used in nitrogen fertilizer is natural gas, and petroleum byproducts are the basis of many industrial pesticides. This will result in a dip in our food supply while the industry readjusts to this new reality. The longer we ignore this problem, the bigger the crisis will become. But we have the power to decrease our dependence on oil and lower our demand as supplies become scarce. We can create clean, renewable alternatives for electricity, agriculture, and transportation. Hybrid and electric vehicles offer an alternative to gas burning cars and buses. Plug-in hybrids like this can bridge the gap as electric vehicles technology become more pervasive. They allow a driver to travel up to 40 miles on electric power alone. Advances in biodiesel production have begun to show a truly renewable way of creating new oil. We're able to create algae microbes that can create oil similar to what comes out of the ground. When these fuels are burned, they do not add additional carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. These synthetic oil can be used to make cleaning supplies, jet fuel, diesel fuel, industrial chemicals, and more. There are many other ways of creating electricity other than traditional coal and oil. Wind farms are a common sight in western Pennsylvania. The local utilities are utilizing their power in distributing electricity to residents. The wind industry is hoping to provide 25% of electricity by the year 2025. Over the past five years, there has been a 30% increase in solar power. Updated energy grids are necessary for residents with their own solar panels who wish to sell their energy back to the grid. Solar energy is a safe, clean, renewable energy source that will continue to develop and solve many of our future energy needs. Once, people believed that the world's supply of oil would be exhausted. However, due to ever-improving technology, we are predicting that we will never reach that point. Technologies have already begun to extend the lifespan of oil and will continue to advance to a point where we are independent of oil and society as a whole will move to a new energy source. While this source of energy may not be known at this time, it is far more plausible that we will find this new energy source than see the world's supply of oil disappear.